about to witness one hell of a cutting demonstration. I'm here with Lee Scott from Starag. Um, Lee, let's take a look at this machine. There's plenty of new features and there is a, an unbelievable cutting demonstration going to happen. Just before we go in, tell us what this machine is. Well, this machine's a, an STC1250 heavy duty hydrostatic guide weight machine. Okay, let's go and have a look. You lead the way. I love going inside machines and giving our viewers the opportunity to see um, what you're going to see today. Lee, in here, uh, a block of titanium, aircraft um, material. We're going to see this machine in, in a minute, but before we do that, talk, us, talk to us about what is in this machine and how it is made up. Well, you, you've got a component mounted on, a, on an angle plate, as you can see, or a cube may be used on a B-axis table. It could be, uh, could be, could be for, for static milling, could be dynamic uh, rotation, or even for, for high speed for turning. Here you've got Starag's famous STC head, very heavy duty HSK 100 head, with a with a heavy duty adapter plate for angle angle brackets, um, sorry, angular tools. But you've got a, a, a damping brake system. You've got. Um, vibration sensors, you've got thermal sensors, you've got displacement sensors, very advanced bit of kits. Which you're going to need when you see what's coming next. Let's go outside. Sure. Uh, Stefan, if you would like to um, press go on the machine. So this cutting demonstration is something that's happening here at these tech days, really to show off the capabilities and the dynamicness of this machine. An incredible, um, an incredible cutting demonstration we're about to see. What are we actually doing in here, Lee? Well, what we've done is we, we've further developed this machine now to make it a hydrostatic guideway machine. So very, very heavy duty, um, stable cuts in airframe and, and aero engine components, specifically for hard metals, titaniums and, and, and ink and type materials. The two real key things here are the stiffness and the dampening. So, you know, you've got components here that could be, say, a metre or more, above the table, so you've got an awful lot of force and an awful lot of bending moment. So you need a machine that's very stiff, but you also need to be able to dampen out the vibrations through heavy cutting. And as you can see here, we've got big porcupines, big face mills on titanium. And titanium's, it's easy for us to cut, but it's a difficult material to cut, generally. Okay, now we've seen um, one of, the, this is the, the second tool changer, so this is gonna be the second tool in cut. Um, Stefan, if you just want to step this way, because I just want to ask you, what, what did we see there, if you could just come this way, in terms of the, the cut that we just saw, what was that? This was a 160 millimeter end mill with a width of cut 50 millimeters and depth of cut of 8 millimeter in one go. And what are we seeing now? This is now a diameter 63 porcupine and the cut of depth is 63 millimeter, width of cut is 35 millimeter. Okay, and you can barely feel uh, any vibration in the, in the floor or around the machine, can you? Which I think is in, 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 importantly, isn't it? It just shows, it shows off the strengths of the build. Yeah, well, well pe people that machine titanium will know what this means now. So it's a 63 millimeter porcupine cutter in, in, a, in a half deep, a half deep cut. The part behind us that we'll look at in a minute is a full D, D by D, 63 by 63 cut, almost silent. You can see the volume of chips now coming off this machine, and it's the volume of chips that make you money. Yeah, uh, when, you, when you talk about machining like this in the aerospace sector, how important is metal removal? Because I'm assuming reductions in cycle time is critical, isn't it? Well, well time is where you make money. The, the faster that you can cut these parts, the, the, the more parts you're going to produce, the more money you're going to make. It's as simple as that. And with the chip fall away here, you, you can obviously, it's being evacuated out the side of the machine, um, you, you, and your coolant flood wash is being recycled. All of those parts and the elements are important in the whole process, aren't they? Of course they are. But, but as I say, it, it's all about producing parts quickly. I mean, this slot behind us, that we can see just here, Again, people that cut titanium will know what this means. It's a 63 by 63 full slot cutter, almost silent, no chatter marks. I mean, that's incredible. If you imagine this, without doing it this way in one operation, if you had to make three or four passes, that's increasing your cycle time by three or four times. Absolutely, isn't it? absolutely. Yeah. So, so that you know, the, the, there aren't machines on the market that can take that in one go. Okay, let's step this way with the, with the camera. Um, loading stations for setters and operators then, this is where you would, this is how you keep the machine running then lights out, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, 
that spindle has to run. That spindle has to run 24-7. So often we'll build these machines into an FMS system. So you'll have multiple machines, several pallets, complete lights out machining. As a standard, they come with two pallets. So as a standard, you, you, you're always cutting. And when you're tackling hard materials and um, you know removing material at such a rate, how do you ensure how do you check tolerances being maintained? How do you how do you do all that in a machine like this? Well, you, you, you can have probing cycles, but probing cycles are not cutting chips. So typically you rely on the machine accuracy and performance to produce good parts and you would measure the parts offline on a, on a CMM. Okay, and part of the way the machine does that is what we're going to see down here. Some versions of the SCC range have, have linear guides. This is a hydrostatic system, so you, you can see the size of it's the guideways. Huge. And you run you're running oil on this face. So there's no there's no contact. The there's no contact. No. You're running on a very, very thin film of oil. So essentially there's gonna be no wear then, no wear parts. There's, there's, there's no wear. Um, there's, there's a natural dampening process happening just, just by the way that the machine's assembled. Um, will that improve your tool life then? Will, will that I'm sure improve it will. The, yeah. I'm sure it will. The way that hydrostatics have advanced, they're also very fast. There used to be a, a big advantage for linear guideways compared to hydrostatics on the speed that the machines will move. They're not today. This machine is as fast as, it, as its linear guide rail sister in the range. So, you know, there's no detriment to performance when the machines moving to tool change or, or rapiding, there's massive improvements in, in its cutting capability. When you bring your customers here and they see stuff like this, what, what, what's their reaction? Well, they're, they're normally a bit blown and away they're because be they're, they're, they're machining at much slower rates. So we, 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 you can't sell a machine like this from a brochure. You have to bring a customer here, do a cut, get the wow factor, then look at how does this affect cycle times on their components. And when you have done that, what are the improvements you've seen from it, or what improvements have your customers seen? Just masses of reductions in those cycle times, yeah, basically. And that, that's what this throughput. machine does. So you, you said earlier, is it going to be four times faster, three times faster, whatever? It is. It's, it's that kind of step change.